In this video, we're going to talk about composition of functions, but we're going to start with a reminder of what it means to evaluate a function at a particular value. So, for example, if I have some functions, L of x equals x plus 3, R of x equals the square root of x plus 3, Q of x equals x over x plus 3, s of x equals x squared plus 3, and c of x equals x cubed plus 3. We can do a lot of different things with these functions. I've chosen these names for these functions because as we play around with them, um, we're going to notice that this one, l of x, is a line. When you graph this, you get a line, so we call this a linear function. So L stands for line. Q stands for quotient here. R stands for radical. Uh, I could have used R for rational, but I wanted different names for these two functions. S stands for squared, and C stands for cubed. So just so you know, that's where those names came from. It's going to be easier to refer back to them if we can remember, for example, that Q is our quotient function. All right, so by way of reminder, what is L of 0? Well, that just means take L of x, the function L of x, and plug in 0 where you used to see an x. Uh, I'll go ahead and change that, that 0 as well to a different color. So you can see that what we're plugging in there is the 0. And when you do that, you get that this is equal to 0 plus 3, or 3. So we have that L of 0 is equal to 3. Okay, so what's L of 1? Well, L of x is x plus 3, so L of 1 will be 1 plus 3. And that gives us that L of 1 is equal to 4. And this is a pretty basic, simple task to, to do. Uh, let's do one more with a different function. Let's take, um, look for the right one here. How about q? Everywhere there was an x, I'm going to plug in a value. Let's do q of 2. So q is q of 2 is the function q of x when x equals 2. So we're going to get the q, oops, I wrote a 2 there. Uh, q of 2 is equal to 2 over 2 plus 3, which is 5. And that's all there is to it. But what if we wanted, for example, q of something else? Let's do this. What am I going to plug in this time? Um, on the surface, I hope it looks like I'm just going to do a second example, the way I did with the, the function l of x. But in fact, instead of plugging, plugging in a number, I'm going to plug plugging in an unknown number. I'm going to plug in an unknown number. Right? So I can just plug in whatever number I'm given, and if the number I'm given is is it has an unknown value, I get the same thing, or at least I do the same thing. All right, the value of q, the function q, at the number a is just whatever a is over whatever a is plus 3. And there's nothing more that I can do with this. If I could simplify it, I would. But that's the value of q of a. It gets really interesting, though, when you plug in, let's go back to l. When you plug in something like, for example, a whole new function. Let's try L of x plus 1. That means plugging in x plus 1 wherever I used to see an x. Okay, let's try to simplify this. L of x plus 1 is x plus 1 plus 3. Well, that simplifies to x plus 4. So when I do this, I have a whole new function. And this is what we call composition of functions. I'm composing this function L with another function, y equals x plus 1. That's called a composition, and it's a composition of two functions. And when I do that, I get a new function. Let's do another example. Let's do q. I'll just do the same one of x plus 1. That's going to be x plus 1 over x plus 1 plus 3. 
I've abandoned the, the different colors now because most of the time you won't bother with different colors and, and I kind of want you to start to get used to that anyway. So Q of X plus one, the function Q with the function X plus one plugged into it is X plus one over X plus one plus three, which as we found in the previous example is X plus four. Right, I got a little carried away with the length of my ratio bar there. So the function Q with X plus one, one plugged into it is X plus one over X plus four. Now let's take this one step further. What if I ask you to take the function L, actually I'm gonna start with a different one. Let's take the function R and plug into it the function, well, let's write it out first. I'll go back to using color here. Let's plug into it the function x plus 3. So far, this is very much like what I've done before. I'm going to take the expression I have here and simplify it. So I get x plus 6. And that is what r of x plus 3 is. But notice that r uh, of x plus 3, that x plus 3, I'm going to rewrite this as, first of all, in this manner. Um, x plus 3 was our function L of x, right? So I can write this as R of L of x is equal to L of x plus 3. Well, I know what x plus, or what, what L of x is, it's x plus 3 plus 3, and that means x plus 6. So I got the same thing here, this r of x plus 3 is x root of x plus 6, right? But this notation here lets us, lets us see that we're plugging not just some potentially random function in, but the function we know as L of x. We know the function L of x. It's up here. And I can do this with any combination of functions. So let me do one more example. Um, actually, I think I'm going to clear the screen at this point. I will leave these functions up here, um, but I'm going to erase from here down, and then I'm going to do maybe one or two more examples. Okay, let's try um, R with S plugged into it. That's the function R of X, which is the square root of X plus 3 with the function S plugged into it. That's going to be, I'll put that down here. That's going to be the square root of what was s what was the function s of x? It was x squared plus three. And then simplify. X squared plus three plus three is x squared plus six. All right, how about well let's try let's try reversing that. Let's try s of x with r of x plugged into it. Now it's tempting to say, oh, those are just going to be the same thing, right? You plug one in to the other, you plug the other into the first, you're going to get the same thing. Well, let's let's see what happens here. Let's take the function x, s of x, which is something squared x squared plus 3, and plug the function r of x into it. Well, the function r of x is the square root of x plus 3, and then you simplify. Well, when you square a square root, the square and the square root cancel, so you get x plus 3 here, and then plus 3. So we get x plus 6, which is not the same as r of s of x. So you have to be careful about the order in which you write a pair of functions, a composed function, if that's what you're trying to, to, to convey, or if you're given a composed function or a pair of functions to compose, the order in which you compose them actually matters. Okay, there's one, one other thing I'd like to do here, and that is for both of these, I'm going to write these functions a different way. Here I have r of s of x. In other words, I've plugged the function s of x into the function r of x, and here I have s of r of x. And the thing I want to give you here is that there's a special notation for this. Another way to write this is r with a little open circle, s of x. Sometimes you will see the r open circle s in parentheses itself, and sometimes you won't. This one would be s circle r of x, or 
S circle R of X. Both of these read the same way. This means R of S of X, and so does this, R of S. One way to think of this would be, if you see the little open circle, it's almost like a letter O in the word of, right? It's not really, that's not what that stands for, but it's kind of a helpful mnemonic, helps you to help to remember. One thing to keep in mind is that this is not, this is equal to that, this is not equal to R times S of X. That would be something completely different. Hopefully you've done uh, multiplication and division and addition and subtraction of, of functions in a previous course. Um, if I wanted R times S of X, I would take the function R of X, root of X plus three, and multiply it by S of, uh, S of X. And I would get something like, for example, I'll try to put it over here. R times S of X would be uh, the root of X plus three times x squared plus three. Now, I can't actually simplify that any further because of the types of functions that I've been given here. But the point that I'm trying to make anyway is just that r times s of x, either with or without those parentheses, is not the same as r of s, r open circle, right? That, that dot there that we use for times kind of looks like a closed circle. If it's a closed circle, you can interpret it as times. But in this section, in this topic that we're talking about here, we're looking at an open circle here. This is an open circle. Okay, that's all we need to talk about in regards to composition of functions for now. We are gonna revisit this here in a very short amount of time. Um, but for right now, I wanna leave you with a couple of questions. In a conventional one hour per lecture, five times per week class, this is where we would stop for the day. But in classes where we have two sessions back to back, we would maybe take a break at this point and come back in and talk about the questions I'm gonna ask you right now before we go on to the next topic. If you're in a two hour per session class that meets just two days a week and you're watching this video, then these questions are potentially a, a set of one of two sets of questions you might need to, to think about before coming to class at the next session. So just keep that in mind. These questions are things that if we have time at the end of an hour, we would take a moment and I would ask these questions or put them up on the screen or put them up on the board and ask you to discuss amongst yourselves what you think the answers to these questions are. If we have time at the end of an hour, we would do that in class. If we don't, then we would start the next session or potentially the next class meeting, two, two hour class meeting on a different day with these questions. So if you're watching this video because you couldn't make it to class at all, then you should plan to be, you should be prepared to answer these questions with your classmates, not on a quiz or anything, but um, with your classmates, people to answer these questions before going on to the next topic. All right. So if you're watching this video, one of two things has happened. Either you didn't make it to class and you need to find you need to know what we talked about so that you're up to speed with your classmates. And so when you come into class the next time, you're ready to hit the ground running. If you were in class, you might be watching this video just by way of review. Or maybe you actually just kind of really grok on lecture style. You don't really like the activities or you're not used to the activities. And you kind of want a way to sort of make sure you, you've captured everything that we did in class in a, in a more conventional way. Either way, the questions I'm gonna ask you now are questions that you should be prepared to answer the following time we meet. Um, if we have time to address them before the end of class, we will, but we might not, or we might revisit them. So be prepared to talk about these questions in groups at the beginning of the next class meeting time. So here, the, here are the questions I would like you to think about. The first one is, is composition of functions commutative? What we were doing in this section was composition of functions. I took one function and plugged it into another function. That's called composition of functions. It's an operation or doing something to a function. Is that, is that operation commutative? You might need to go look up what commutative is. commutative is. You may remember it from a previous class. You certainly should have been exposed to it. 
in a previous class, but you know, we're all human and sometimes our memories fail a little bit. So if you don't remember what commutative means, just go look it up, just Google it. Once you know what it is, talk about composition of functions as an operation. The operation is take a function, plug it into a different function. When you do that, is that commutative? If it is, give an example. If it's not, give an example of why it's not, right? That would be one way to kind of convince yourselves and me that you understand, first of all, what commutative means, and second of all, whether or not uh, composition of functions is commutative. Now, if you're, if you're watching this video because you weren't in class, it's something you might want to think about trying to answer before you come to class. The, your classmates will have seen the questions, and they may or may not be discussing them amongst themselves during class, but they will certainly know what the questions are before they leave class, so they can be thinking about them, and you should as well. The next question is, does f open circle g of x, does this notation here mean f with g plugged into it or g with f plugged into it? Which of these two notations is equivalent to this notation here? And that I want you to discuss with your classmates just because I really want you to know which one it is. It does matter. And so you are going to, um, you're going to run into this notation quite a bit, uh, certainly in the next few days and then also in future classes. And so I really want you to be comfortable knowing which one is which. Um, once you've decided, can you think of a mnemonic? Can you, can you think of a way to remember which one of these two notations matches this one? And I ask you that for a couple of reasons. One, it'll help you remember, but also it'll help you help your classmates understand which one it is. All right. So give those questions some thought. Um, because I'm teaching this class in the quarter in which I'm pr producing these videos, I'm teaching this class as a two hour block. Um, but I may teach it in the future where it's only a one hour per day for five days a week. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and make a completely separate video for what we would be doing in the second half of class if it was a two hour block. So we'll have separate videos for the two sort of sub sessions, if you will, for the two hours that we meet in class. Um, we will have a, a break between the two hours and so we'll treat those as two kind of separate class meetings.